Here we go, folks. Uh, cheers. Welcome back to Coffee Buzz. Cheers. Special guest today with Tyler Wagner. As you can tell, this guy is strictly from the West Coast. Uh, he drinks out of a plastic cup with his nitro coffee brew. Nitro cold brew. Nitro extra, cold brew. Extra caffeine. <laughs> That's West Coast, isn't it? Looks like extra sugar and extra cream. Uh, I don't know what they did. It's nitro cold brew. Didn't ask for anything. You got to go up to the mic a little bit. You got to go up to the mic. Go up to the mic a little bit. That's why good now. Got that West Coast swag with us today with a couple Midwest boys, and uh, we're gonna see how he keeps it out here. Okay, it's a little bit faster out here intellectually. Uh, very cerebral. It gets in. It gets heavy in these corners. We're gonna go five minutes. Five minutes. No one asked a question. We dance around the topic. We try to come up with the best answer that we need at the time. Fair. Does that make sense? <laughs> More so that's, we sounds need. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and solve some issues. Go ahead, Noel. No. If you could play for one coach, past or present, who would it be? If you could play for one coach, Ooh. past or present, is it a coach that we've had? Any, any, any. any coach in human history. Yep. Wow. Steve, Still well, up. you are titled Coach McGuigan. On, uh, People uh, do your, call me coach. On your social circuits, so you're going to be the, the ringleader here. I'm playing for Ditka. It's not even a question. <laughs> Uh, I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan through and through, uh, 100%. It, as a 30-year-old man, if the Vikings won the Super Bowl this year, I'd probably tear up, 100%. Dick had massive swagger, he had massive standards, and he had massive success. Who you guys got? Didn't he coach the Bears? Yeah. He did. That's why I wanted to make sure I started with the Vikings. That's why I wanted to make sure I started with the Vikings. He was too. He was up there, but obviously yeah. he's taking a I'm playing for Dick, aggressive gum chew. Very aggressive, gum to you. I'd feel real good playing behind him. <laughs> That's a very good reason. I like that. Yeah, have you ever seen it? No. Folks, YouTube dick guys. Aggressive gum to you. Nick Addison. Shout out to Nick Addison. Uh, his father looks exactly like Dick. He, he does. It's unbelievable. Does. Uh, Tony Vaca smirking. Dick is my answer. Fair. Fair answer. Wags? Uh, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm going to go with uh, Belichick. Nice. Yeah. Belichick? I Why? think. I mean, you would get run out of the building. Go ahead. Favorite holiday Christmas too. You yeah. would get run out of the building. He's a he's a systems guy, and you would not mold to the system. I'm, I, I, I'm more I, big... I like him because I think you can plug in any guy to to what he does, and he's seen massive guys come from nothing to be successful. In my eyes, obviously that's being from the outside in. Um, I'd say he adapts to his roster as opposed fair. to plug any guy in. Fair. That's just me. Okay. Belichick but, gets you, Wags. You walk into the room. Yeah. Belichick goes, what can you do for this team? What's I'm, he plugging, chugging you at? I'm going with a seam route, and I'm going over the top. <laughs> I'm going to try to moss guys. Seam route over the top. Yeah, but then I'm getting tackled right away. Just how it happened in freshman year of football. I would go up, get the football, get tackled right away. So he would know that, and he would use me to my strengths. And, and that's why you should play for Belichick. Dicko wouldn't stand for no yaks. Okay, that's fine. But and to add to it, three quarter sleeves, hoodies. Oh sure, it's just pure swag, in my eyes, pure swag. Big time. Dresser. It is. It's aggressive, and it's like it's, it's uh, aggressive it's, calling it's, that swag. Well, he takes it. To, it. He takes it, it to the. I think it's just an incredible comfort for him. I think it's perfect. Fair. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Which is swag, really, when you yeah. think about it. You know, doing whatever you he want. Care. He's gonna wear the same thing. Yeah. Whatever he wants. Valid point. And he in his interviews are sometimes hilarious with how stoic he is. Yes. Hilarious. Uh, mine would be Bobby Cox. Mm. Oh wow! The Atlanta Braves, just okay. an absolute son of a bitch. <laughs> Harvard. I know. Yeah. Sorry, but yeah, I've been wanting to. <laughs> Guy turned thirty and he just started dropping b bombs. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, that's how he is. That's how he was. You know, I went and did. A, I actually did an Atlanta Braves tour. Mm. Remember that, Noel? You and I did that. And I'd always liked Bobby Cox because I used to play Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, on uh, N64. You remember that? Yeah. And that was when uh, they had the big dogs on the Braves. So I just had a real love early on with the Braves with Glavin, Maddox, uh, Rocker would come in there hot. And Bobby Cox, he let those guys play, but he kept them in line. And, uh, and you saw a lot of success out of that. And so, I mean, it's an it's – I a, love that Rocker was dropped right there. It's That's an perfect. Atlanta Brave. It's a Bobby Cox. It's uh, we're going nose to nose with the league, and we're going to take them on for a few years and get some Ws, and that's what he did. Fair, nice. I'm going to go Coach, or Coach K out of Duke. Oof. Grew up a Duke fan. Wow. Sure. Grand, granddad played for Duke basketball, walk on point guard, at a vicious five. For six. real? Yep. Mm -hmm. Super short, just uh, walk on point guard. 
Um, so grew up GPA watching GPA guy. <laughs> Big GPA. Who's the team, who's the team GPA? He ended, up as a, he ended up as an accountant. So. Perfect. Simple as that. Called it. But uh, incredibly calculated. Uh, I've read parts of his book as well, and like he kind of is calculated where he talks to players, how he talks to players. It's super cool how he uh, adjusts and adapts and kind of takes in like full picture accounts and where to interject with his players and when to let them go. So I like how um, he balances his coaching style. He just seems so chill, huh? Yeah. yeah. He just like knows who he is and he's chilling. Exact opposite of that. Honorable mention: Wally Backman would be really fun to play baseball for. <laughs> Absolutely. Just because Absolutely. like it'd be entertaining, right? If you were in pro ball, like Absolutely. Absolutely. and you're in game yeah. 85, like I'm it'd bad. be kind of nice to have him out I'm there. I'm bad, Doc. I'm bad. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a he's a he's a good one. And, you know, Coach K has. A, I think it's Coach K in his book. It says, uh, "Coach is always right, even when he's wrong." That's a badass <laughs> line too. So my honorable mention. Whitey Can I Her- guess? Go, go ahead, sorry. You were Whitey Her- Herzog? Yeah. I thought you were going to say Madden. You always say you wanted to play for him. Well, I That's yes. I, I, I um, and you know. Not John. Hopefully Dave. some of my role models here, my, my mentors. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully some of my mentors here. And uh, the, I just see a lot of, I see a lot of him in me. I see a lot of, okay. you know, Madden in myself as a coach. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Pete? Uh, those these responses. No, the, the Herzog, the one that's funny, and then we'll go to the next one. I just wanted to share this of the family thing. My so my uncle was getting uh, he he was with the St. Louis Cardinals in 1982, the year they won the World Series. And this is a this is a cool family story of managers. But so for they broke camp and they were getting ready to leave, and my uncle made the starting rotation. And my uncle tells me this story all the time. He always says, "You better humble yourself, or this game's gonna humble you." And um, he goes, you know, in 1982, you know how they talk to you, you know how your relatives talk to you like that? In 82, and I've heard the story 20 times, in 82, Herzog pulled me aside before we leave camp. Looks at me, gives me a ball, and he goes, Johnny, here's the game ball. You're going to pitch number two for the St. Louis Cardinals. Only you will pitch yourself out of this lineup. And you know what? Three weeks later, pitch himself out of the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> I did just that. <laughs> I always tell that to the kids. I think that's hilarious. But I say it from my point of view. Go ahead, Noel. No, it's Mike. Mike. Hey, for everyone listening, not that I haven't been on enough of these, i got to hand my microphone over to Nolan so he can ask questions. What do you think our subconscious is? What do we think our subconscious is? Yeah. Like for what we... Th- Just what is it? Our subconscious. So you're saying like... Don't we know? Yeah, don't we know? Isn't it, it our subconscious? <laughs> <laughs> pretty simple. Out? What does it do? What's its job? Why do you have thoughts and feelings? Where does it come from? So why do we have thoughts and feelings and where does it come from? So what is our subconscious to you? Our subconscious, that's essentially like our habits. Okay. So that... Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I, I, no, so, you go through some stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean it's over? Did we answer it then? Well, we found out at the meeting tonight that if his parents didn't like that question, he's going to have some issues yeah, when he gets we home. Have. We have found Big out. Big shout out to the Johnson family. We absolutely love them. <clears throat> well, so I guess I guess the best way I can uh, formulate a, an answer past the, the concrete okay you just threw at the boys and all uh, <clears throat> in basically agreeance that we were already done with the answer, I would say – your subconscious is, and there's a common like uh, glacier, ice glacier post that people might have seen in the past where there's like the whole glacier is underneath the water and you don't really see that. You only see like the top of it. And the top is essentially supposed to be your consciousness, like that little, you know, side thing. And then you have this huge layers of deeps of things that you don't really see. And this is where like ru- routines are so big, right? Because your subconscious is such like a massive it's like a habitual part of your being so you wake up and habitually you take a piss and then you take a leak and you go get in your car and you drive and you get a coffee at the gas station and you stop the same red light and you get mad at this time and then you get into work and go oh, i'm tired you know what i mean you just kind of do the same thing over and over again if you can't rewire that subconscious so that's like the point of it's a lot of reasons for like visualization or meditating or being mindful is to essentially rewire things and obviously i'm coming at a negative point of view <clears throat> but in a positive point of view is you could rewire yourself to have great habits and then you could vice versa do all the things very good but as you do that over time you just would subconsciously get up and pee right i'd subconsciously get up and drink the water or whatever you know as you formulate that over time you boys got anything 
I like that response. No, they, well, I, I got one. I, so, <laughs> okay. thanks to for me, asking. Well, I want to make sure, you know, I don't, you know, I like every, everyone having their turn, but to me, your subconscious is basically your second person, right? So that's like when you speak in second person. Mm-hmm. So there's first person, third person. So like, if I'm speaking to you, I'm in first person. Third person would be like, Steve McGuigan goes and gets it, right? And then your second person is <laughs> you, how you speak to yourself. So self-talk, right? And it's actually proven now that saying, come on, Steve, if I say to myself, come on, Steve, you can do this, or let's go, Steve, focus, is better than saying, I can do this. Hey, you should focus. Hey, I need to be better. If you say, Steve, you're better than that, it actually is proven now that that escalates whatever you're trying to accomplish. So to me, your subconscious is you being able to talk to yourself, and then when you speak to yourself, stores it, and that's your subconscious. It's basically your soul. Yeah, it's like your it's like your files unsaved, mm-hmm. and then you'd consciously be talking to you because you. this would essentially be your whole life. Yes, and then this would be like the moment. Yes, I like that analogy. I think we should actually do talk more about that analogy more often because you would really think about it. Consciously would be the essence of presence, right? Like being in the mm-hmm. present, you will you'd presently always be conscious because the only way you'd be able to remember that or remember your files would be the past and the only way to project the future would be formulating some sort of memory that you've had in the past of what you perceive the future could be but regardless you're always just sort of consciously living if you're aware of that yes so like if you're ever like getting ready for an interview or a big meeting or something like that or a game and you look in the mirror and we've all done it and you've been like looking in the mirror and you're like i can do this man i can do this i can do this Literally say, come on, Steve, you can do this, Steve. You can do this, Steve, and you will get better results. There it is. Boom. So you just got to. Just another tool for the fucking tool belt. You just got to take Steve out of there if your name's not Steve and put your name in there. Did you, he said the F word? Did you say the F word? <laughs> Good. So now I don't have to feel as bad because I've been subconsciously thinking about it the whole time. He's such a violent gentleman. <laughs> yeah, he is. What do you got on that wire? Did you got anything? Yeah, I mean. I agree with all that. Um, I think people's perception of subconscious and conscious can be different in what you believe. I think, you know, some people think the subconscious is the conscious in being present. Um, But I like the analogy of you um, using the subconscious to access the, the past and the future. I think you need that. There you go. 100%. 100%. I think the subconscious is incredibly powerful. And when you start diving into what else you can generate from your subconscious are these feelings and these instincts that come from it too, or you, like a gut feeling. Mm-hmm. And you, your body, so like, uh, what's a good, uh, Malcolm Gladwell's blink when he starts talking about the different physiological responses that we process before we actually consciously think about them. So the examples in the book are people playing cards and like the cards, are, the deck's going bad in blackjack and their hands start to sweat and uh, heart rate increase and that kind of thing, but they still stay there and play and that kind of stuff. Once your mind realizes, oh, this is a bad deck, your hands and your body actually respond first. Or these art specialists look at a sculpture and they know it's fake just out of just instinct and 10,000 hours and all that kind of stuff. Again, it goes back to habits and Mm -hmm. time and experience, but uh, obviously we're all believers that habit basically set your direction in life. So, well, it's interesting you say it because it's like a physiological response after a thought, right? Yeah, but that's why I think that that iceberg analogy is good because so much of what we comprehend, we don't comp- we can't don't consciously comprehend. Right. Well, that's why you do. Uh, what did Jeff? We were with uh, Jeff the other day in the heat. Or no, no, sorry, we were with uh, Ken Ken Zen in the heat nice the other day, and he was talking about how he loves uh, how you if you put yourself into the ice and you learn how to breathe in that situation and then when you like feel that breathing in normal life start to speed up you can be like oh that was a time that i learned how to slow my breathing down in the ice example and that would be like the essence of practicing for poker right yep like i know this but i've been in this position before which would be that mastery if you will yeah that's right? good. oh good see pete we could do a lot of good things man if we just hang in there <laughs> great question nolan great question <laughs> but I am. What is the most courageous thing a person can do? Well, yeah, it's tough. Some of them are. I told you, it's in the ring. It's yeah. Midwest up here. 
It's not as it's not slow. We're, I mean, we're dark. It's dark months here most time. Dive yeah. into it. I'm giving. I'm just taking time as we as you guys think. <laughs> <laughs> you got one? Oh yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think that sacrifice is the world's most courageous thing that you can do. So obviously, like that has many different forms, right? Mm-hmm. Like jumping in front of a bullet to yeah. get hit by a bullet would be sacrifice, but sacrifice is the most selfless act that someone can have it's extremely rare right because we're all wired to protect ourselves to believe in ourselves to forward ourselves so once you can get out of that and you can sacrifice self-gain and truly cheer for others and do things that allow others to be successful i think that's extremely courageous because a lot of that times that can come at the detriment of them maybe socially or publicly or visually or reputation wise yet they know that that was the right thing to do and that's extremely courageous because while life is difficult like already it's already super hard so if you're willing to sacrifice things for other people that's the most courageous thing in the world to me sacrifice covers a lot of bases yeah. right there yes yeah, steve your boy. Whether it's happiness or your life or I mean oh, time. sacrifice. Yeah, time, time is one of the biggest ones. Well think of all the time think of all the times you've seen like someone be really successful, right? So baseball guy. Why do people watch baseball games and see players' parents in the stands? Why is that so intriguing? Absolutely. Because you never see true, genuine happiness from one person to somebody completely other than themselves. That's why people respond to that so well. That's why people play that over and over again because it's not normal, right? It's not normal for someone to be so selfless that they look at someone and go, I'm so happy for you. Mm -hmm. And that is sacrifice because those parents have usually sacrificed a massive amount to have that person be successful. And that's very hard to um, see from the outside in too. 100%. 100%. So you don't really truly appreciate that. Yeah. You're, yeah. And people are transparent, right? I'm one of the coffee buzz. I talked about how like eyes, like eyes are the most valuable thing because you look at somebody's eyes and you can tell right away, like if they're genuine, if they're lying, if they're truthful, if they mean what they say. So like seeing people be genuine is so rare and you can't sacrifice without being genuine. So I just think sacrifice is extremely courageous. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it. I mean, uh, the, to add on top of that, the only I'm trying to think maybe you can help me with the Stoic philosopher that always said sometimes simply to live is an act of courage, and uh, and you know you look at that and I think as we have it's, we we're celebrating a lot of birthdays. You know, birthdays cause for reflection. We just had some. We've had like we always do. We have our meals and our our meetings together. We got wags in town for a few days, so it drives for a lot of conversation. But I think as you do get older, you realize. How in going back to one of our previous questions about the subconscious, you realize how much people won't consciously just live. Like they won't consciously tackle sacrifice. They won't consciously think about how hard it is to just make the right choice. I mean, that in itself is an act of courage to just do the right thing. Where everything, it's almost a skill. To learn. Yeah, everything yeah. you, everything that you do, every corner you take, there's just a new line of temptation. You know, the higher you get, it's just a higher level of temptation. And it's like you, Wags mentions happiness, and it's like, well, we seek happiness, and then you got to really try to define, well, then what is happiness, you know, because at the end of the day, like, there's never, you're never going to just ultimately avoid negativity in the world, you're not going to avoid temptation in the world, you're not going to avoid, you're, you're going to have all these things the whole way through, you know, so then to courageously understand sacrifice courageously understand just simply living and what that means to you and how important that is to you is a i think that is rings true to that stoic quote and that can also be strengthened through the subconscious to where that becomes more normal and more normal until you know you do it more often yeah until you have it Uh right and that would be the that would be the objective right of improvement I just think the the authenticity is the hardest thing. I think it's incredibly courageous to be generally authentic. Mm. Just with the with all the externals in life right now, whatever it is, your your phone, people, everything, all those influences to still understand yourself enough to be authentic and portray that to everybody. I think that's incredibly courageous because because most of the time when we hear people be authentic, sometimes it comes off as being 
I mean, new vocabulary words being a jerk or something along those lines, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I, I, yeah, but a, a lot of time or short or blunt and those kind of things because they don't have time for external influences and those kind of things. So there's times in my life where I've envied that ability to not have to dress up verbally and that kind of like just talking to people or expressing myself. I, I like the when I'm happiest is when I can be authentic. So I will cuss on this podcast if I want to. Hell yes. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> I'm bad. I'm bad. Go ahead, Noel. I like those rounds, boys. Stay in there. I can feel it's, a he- it's heavy in here right now. What's invisible but you wish people could see? Oh, wow. That's a great one. Noli, good week for you. Truth. Dove. What's invisible? Oh, that boy, Wags. <laughs> hey, Get in there, baby. What'd you say? Truth. Ooh, go man. deeper. Go deeper. Take us down. I mean, I think that if you could see truth, I think uh, like it goes back to being authentic. Then everybody would be authentic, and then everybody would essentially understand what everybody wants in life and, and truly understand how people are. And I think that because you couldn't hide, you couldn't lie to people, you couldn't, you had to show who you truly were, mm-hmm. um, I think that would make it a, a better world. Yeah, I think it'd be... I big think, time answer. Yeah, it's a big time answer. I think it's an in it's like admirable and exciting to think about, right? But it's uh, what I think is crazy to think is that everybody. So in this on this specific podcast, the four of us: Steve is from Minnesota, Brian's from Ohio, I'm from Michigan, you're from Nevada. You know, and so there's different spectrums of the world that ultimately brings you to this moment. And everyone has these unique little ecosystems of people around them throughout the whole journey. And what I think is so unique about truth, because I love this concept, but I think what's so unique about it is that no matter what, WAGS is, and all of us have had so many different experiences that only we know. So, like, I have no idea what your Growing experience. Up in Las Vegas. Yeah, I have no idea what your experience actually looks like in your lens. Mm-hmm. So, I have no idea what your behaviors of what growing up, like, what that looks like. I have no, like, we can talk about values, and I always think, okay, if we threw a list of five values at the table, if we just say accountability, well, don't you think that all of us could define accountability differently? But yet that's what makes like group families and friends and truth i think so unique mm-hmm. is that when you finally decide that you and somebody else have at least agreed upon truth it doesn't have to be the same seeing it from the same view but i think the the day that you decide that you've agreed on on that because it is will and will be invisible because you will never see that completely from somebody else's viewpoint so then ultimately it becomes full circle here the ultimate sacrifice right to really trust you or really trust you or you really trust me you know i'm following you that's where i was at with your thought i like it you following i'm with you so what, what was the format of the question one more time what's something invisible that you wish people could see and we chose truth or well, he chose truth i don't i guess i didn't really have an answer if we, <laughs> no, i like it um, you, you agree. If we're going yeah, deep, agree. <laughs> deeper into something I wish was tangible would be the soul. Mm. Oof. Because mm. just it's shapeless. It's our, it's somewhere in our mind, subconscious, energy, whatever you want to call it, or whatever you want to believe it's going uh, after we leave this this present body or shape, whatever you want to consider yourself. But, Meat body. But I mean, we, the, the soul is we, we try and imprint our memories and everything onto this this soul. We our values, everything create this soul, this person, this this being. So I'd I'd like to see like what if that was a body part? Like what if that was like a memory chip or however you want to see it? Like I just think that'd be cool. Mm, that would be cool. That would be really cool. Yeah, you should try super to tight. you should try to make something to find that. That'd be sweet. The infinite being. Yeah. Just be energy. It'd be so cool. I'm gonna say insecurities. I wish that everyone's insecurities weren't invisible. I think that people spend so much time focused on things that are so dumb Mm -hmm. and so ridiculous, and they're convinced that people think it matters. And if those insecurities would just be completely visible to everybody, they'd be able to go, really, that? And they go, yeah. And then they go, that's not a big deal. And then you go, oh, okay. And then you'd move on on with your entire life. Right, so all of our insecurities, really a lot of our insecurities hold us back from achieving our greatest goals. 
right? So now I can't achieve the things that I want to achieve because I'm insecure about what they'll say or what they'll do or how they'll look at me or how I, what clothes I wear, or what I, whatever it is. If our insecurities were out there, people wouldn't be afraid to go for things. Like they wouldn't be afraid to challenge. They wouldn't be afraid to fail because ultimately they would end up seeing it anyways. Mm -hmm. So now if you take insecurities out of it, what do we have to worry about here? Right. You know what I mean? Like, what are we worried about? Everybody, We're not worried everybody's about Everybody's rolling. Everybody's rolling. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pete, you're insecure about how none of your shirts fit? Well, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that anymore. Because we yeah. don't care either. There's no problem. Yeah, yeah, we don't care either, Pete. It's super It's super weird. It is super. That's, that's a phenomenal response. It is a good response. Thanks. I love Cheers, that guys. response. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Good job, boys. I think. Uh, you want to know Oh, yeah. you it? Yeah. Are you, so you like it tonight? Uh, is that what that means? Well, first of all, no one wants to see people fart. I thought that was going to be an answer for sure. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> on a surface a level. <laughs> interesting, interesting response. That's why you asked the questions. <laughs> if you, if Steve you yourself it. had to legally change your <laughs> name, there, Steve. <laughs> what would you there. change your name to? Ooh. Say that one more time. If you, if you yourself had to legally change your name, <laughs> no, this is what awesome. would you change your name to? Fart farter thin. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, all, it's essentially about your. What do you think? Who do you think you are? Is you this know, like, first and last name. Like I don't first think. You, so like, like Steve, for example, like like Harvey's name would be Gerald. Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> Call it. Who roasted? Oh man, Steve's name would be Lamar. <laughs> I knew it. I knew I've it. Always, uh, it's a really great question, all because I've always hated the name Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, mom, mom and dad. I love you. I know you're probably listening. It and like Steve's like a, it's fine, but like, like nobody's ever like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> What a beautiful name. Yeah, you know? it's just like Steve. Yeah. It's like Bob or yeah. Bill or like it's just Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Steve. Hey, Steve. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I I always wanted to be. Uh, well, I loved Kirby Puckett, so I'll name mm. myself Kirby. Nice. Kirby yeah. McGuigan. Kirby. Honus. Honus. You'd be Honus. 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 Yeah. You'd be Honus. Yeah, I'd be related to him. I got three. Uh, well, I love my name. Gerald Lamar. I, Gerald and... Lamar Bobby. No. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I like my name, first of all. But if I couldn't, if I could have a different name, I'd be Cutter, Ooh. Dallas, or Rocky. And I have not decided who, which one I think is cooler. Well, right now, you're going to have to pick one. Cutter's tight. But I've wanted to have a dog named Cutter. Cutter Martin. You want your first name to be Cutter. Cutter. Not your nickname. Nah. <laughs> you want your first legal name to be Cutter. Cutter. I want to cut it. And then I wish that I could go through it again. And then I have a dog named Force. Yeah, and in those first, you know, like in those first, in those first, day of, in those first day of classes in grade school, middle school, and high school where they say your name, you know, you don't know the teacher yet, and that's your time if you want your name different on the roll call, you know? Yeah. So, like, I just wish the teacher would go, cut her? And then I'd go, that's right, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Stick with that one. <laughs> All year, man. We, we, All year. We, we got a cutter. We got a cutter. <laughs> Kirby Honus Cutter and Meathead. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'd be uh I'd be a Roman mm. or a Dominic, like Dominic Tretto. I was, I was like that name. Dom. Oh from uh, Dom. Yeah. Dom. Dom. I, but I, I like Roman. I think Roman's like just a good strong name. Yo, Ro. Or, or yeah. Would you Ro, want to Ro. be called Ro or Roman? Ro Roman. Ro. Ro. I like Ro. Ro, Ro Ro's kind of tight. Ro, I like that Ro, word. Ro. You might, Yo, that, Ro, might Ro. Stick. that might stick with you, Ro Ro. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. That's or, that. Or if we got stripper names, you guys don't go down stripper names. No, no. no we'll stay. Uh, no, I go to Dallas you know what? You know what? Dallas. Roman. <laughs> you, you obviously have one. Oh yeah. What do you got? A few. I have uh, us three. What's na what's na uh, what's numero uno? Uh, Cashmere Woods. Oh man, you have really actually one. thought about yeah. it. That's a great name in general. It's, it's also the name of a Febreze fragrance. <laughs> really? Yes. Sure. Woods. I'm Cashmere gonna Woods. It. I'm going to order uh, it. Torquilles. Um, yeah, that one fits. And then uh, what, was, what was the other one we used to use? Gypsy Danger. Me, Nick, Scott all used to have stripper names. Gypsy Danger? Around. Yeah. 
Gypsy Danger. I like yeah. the first one more. I like the first one more, and I think no, that, like going like just we'd go out and dance, and people would ask if we were strippers, so we used yeah. to respond. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that segues us into July nineteenth. Uh, Lion King comes out, and it's the new one. What was your name again? Roman. No, not your real name. Cashmere and Duke Carriage will be there. There, there we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Duke, that's your name. Duke Carriage, that's me. Dan- <laughs> Dances strictly so to country confident. music. <laughs> These boots on. Well, for anyone who's walking. never played that game, I can't believe you. You name you, your name's supposed mm. to be your pet's name and the street you grew yeah. up on. That was an old school game. That's Duke it. Carriage. If you didn't remember, you got to come on, clean it up. It's, it's pet's name and first what? It was supposed to be your pet's name and the name of the street you live on. Yeah. That's Duke Carriage. Kane Grantwood. There you go. There you go. There you go. There, you go. there, there it is, back. right there. And Kane? You're back. I'd be Cosby Concord. <laughs> Where's that coming what from? What do you got, man? What do you got? March, uh, Bill 171st. <laughs> South. <laughs> South. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so remember, remember it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> and cheers, and cheers. Okay, everyone just pipe down. That's, uh, well, actually, you got anything? Got you can, you're just sending I want off. one more question. You want no, one more? There was a question. We can do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, hey, we'll this one, one goes more. to the St. Petersburg Tribune. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Martin. There we go, there we go. One more, No, No, what are you doing? You got to think on the spot. Oh, he's got. He's do you want to go silly or deep? He's got. Well, well we've had a few. Deep last time ones. we tried to go deep, he talked about farting. Well, I was trying to make it light. <laughs> what, about okay, farting. what fictional character do you most relate to? <laughs> what Woo! fictional character? Woo! Woo! Can you define? Uh, now I have had trouble with this my entire being, my subconscious, if you will. What the like difference between fiction and nonfiction is? Like- <laughs> <laughs> Fiction's fake, nonfiction's <laughs> real. <laughs> just want to make sure we're clear. Yours would be like Hercules. And I'm asking for everyone who's wondering. You know, I'm asking yeah. for everybody who's wondering. To clear that up. Okay, so fictional is a fake character. Correct. Yeah, it's like like and it's, so you're just talking like, about like, Lion King, yeah, like, movies, whatever. Yeah. Any of those, any of those play. Yeah. yeah. I got you guys like a Harry Potter. Come on, I've always been an. I mean, when I was in college, I used to tell everybody that I was like Brad Pitt in the movie Troy. And yeah, that was funny. Achilles, that would have been one of mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know mine, so I'm who close. Is? Jimmy Dugan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jimmy, Jimmy Dugan from A League of Their Own. Watch the movie, try not to love him. <laughs> Jimmy Dugan. It's, it's a perfect response. We have no other response. Well, I know who you would be. Like, that's who I, people call me coach. I'd love to be Jimmy Dugan. Yeah, you know he's he's you know he's a fall down drunk. He likes to have a little bit of fun, <laughs> <laughs> but he, you know he doesn't take it serious. He sees the beauty in the gals. He teaches them the game. He's cussing out umpires. He's got one liners. He's a ball player. He used to hit home runs. I mean that's who I want to be, Jimmy Dugan. Your Hall of Famer, in my book, Coach. You being a remember the Titans no, guy? I'd be, oh. I'd be the big about. I'd be the dude. <laughs> there you go. There's that there there guy. Yes. Oh. I'm the dude, man. Yeah, dude, man. That's my carpet. <laughs> <laughs> now you, your, your answer just took me into a whole new place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. That's the beauty of it. He is. He wants to be the dude. Yeah. He wants to be the dude so much that I bought Kahlua, and I have it at my house for any time he wants to do that. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. prepared for his dude I have Kahlua to come at the out. house, yeah. Anytime. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Happy Gilmore. Now that you've answered that, I'm going with Happy oh, Gilmore. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Just life. a bad boy the of golf. Life. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> no idea what he's doing. Making adjustments on the fly. Winning tourneys. Really, honestly, if you could live the life that uh, – we all think of it as a comedy, but if you could be the bad boy of golf – yeah. Just making bank, bank, play for years. You're the people's champ of a sport that everybody really kind of watches and loves and falls yeah. asleep to on Sundays. You can do it for a long time. Yeah, you can do it forever. You yeah. play the senior what tour. What do you want? You could be all, you could be out there with your hockey stick putter on the <laughs> senior <laughs> tour. Absolutely, happy Gilmore. <laughs> yeah. And people will love you for it. Love you. They love you for it. Ratings your, have never been higher. But and you, your authentic and, self. And yeah. Anyone and anyone who doesn't know Wags is one of my favorite. This is the first time I've ever met him. He's one of my favorite Instagram follows. Loves the Vegas Knights. But you're gonna have to wear the Bruins jersey out there. Ooh. If I was happy, I would do it. Okay. If I was that, happy, would, I would, that would play. Absolutely. Fair enough. Forrest Gump, are you up next? <laughs> <laughs> I 
got him. I like that one. Oh, just you know, big Forrest Gump fan. Well, really, hold on a second now, Pete. Let's not hate on Forrest Gump. No, I think he's phenomenal. War, war hero. I thought it was a true story. All American yeah, football yeah. player. Yeah. Uh, has a love of his life, treats her better than any other man has ever treated her. Yeah. I don't know. You might be forced. He's so, he, great, yeah. great investor. He's a <laughs> yeah, phenomenal investor. investor. <laughs> damn, Mac and, the damn Apple gave him. He'd have to worry about money no more. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> great at ping pong. All my money on ping yeah, pong. Yeah, world, travel the world playing ping pong. Uh, thanks, Harv. Uh, <laughs> answer is Forrest Gump. Yes. <laughs> Who is Forrest Gump? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> It's not fair. You have the alpha stem on. You're thinking clear tonight. Nah, it's done. Uh, who would you be? I'm going Forrest Gump. Oh, you are going Forrest Gump. Oh, yeah. Real quick, real, oh, real, real quick, because we're having so much fun to wrap up. Special guest appearance to Tony Vaca. I want to know who Tony Vaca would be. Yes. Tony's one of our biggest guest audience yes. members. Tony, Tony, who would you be? For what? I'll pass him the mic. What was the question? The who question was, was what, what character would you be? Like, who would you want to be the most? Oh, man. So right uh, now we have Jimmy Dugan, Happy Gilmore, we Forrest have, Gump. We have not, <laughs> we have not used uh, the elf from <laughs> Santa Claus. I knew, I knew, I knew, one of you, I knew one of you guys was going to say that. What did you say, Bernard? It's, yeah, Bernard, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Bernard? yeah. You'll be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard or uh, Billy Madison? Ooh. Oh, wow. Nudie so Magazine like Day. <laughs> October? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Oh, that was a good time. Everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Boom. Cheers. Yeah, everyone Cheers. Have good, everyone have a good Friday. <laughs>